Hello and welcome to the DMS Metering Solutions channel. My name is David from the technical team. Uh, today we'll be taking a look at the J48 range of low pressure gas regulators. If you have any questions about the, uh, the following products or indeed any of our product range, please feel free to get in touch with us either by the phone number or the email address you'll find in the description. The J48 regulators are available from 3 quarter inch small sizes all the way up to 6 inch large industrial regulators. From 3 quarter inch to 2 inch they are available with a screwed connection. It is a female internal thread as you'll see there. Uh, and then from 65 mil upwards we generally supply the regulators with PN16 flanges. The regulators have a maximum inlet pressure of 350 millibar and various outlet pressure ranges available from the spring options that are all available. The standard stock that we hold here at DMS have the 12 to 25 millibar range as that covers most natural gas applications. The J48s though are not just limited to natural gas and can be used also with LPG and other inert gases that are also used in the industry. These regulators are suitable for use in both horizontal and vertical planes of installation. So depending on your pipe work, you can just simply move the regulator and rotate it as you see fit. Now, one other thing we wanted to do in the video today was actually perform a spring change, give you a little guide as to how you would go about changing the spring within a J48 regulator, just in case you ever need to come across that in your day-to-day -day work. So, let's change the spring. Okay, so what we have here is the three quarter inch regulator, the smallest in the range, a uh, bit easier to handle on camera. And the first thing we're gonna need to do is actually remove the top cap from the regulator. So that can be done by hand, no tools necessary there. Uh, the next step is actually to remove this holding clip. Um, you have to lift it at both ends, so lift at the front and at the back, uh, and basically it will then slide off of the unit. Um, so it's a little difficult to see on camera, uh, but I'm just lifting both ends here, and then you can see it slid away. Uh, and it's now caught on the adjustment bush, but it is wide enough to now lift up, and that releases the clip from its position. Uh, so in the center of the regulator here, we do have the spring adjustment screw. It's the one I'm pointing at here with the screwdriver. Uh, but we don't need to do anything with that right now. The next part is this hexagonal top. It actually rotates to release the spring adjustment assembly. So anti-clockwise, just as you would do with a normal screw. And you'll then find that the spring pushes back and releases the mechanism. Uh, so this is the spring adjuster that you actually screw down uh, to change the spring position. Uh, and inside there, we've got the spring nice and happy in its housing. Uh, so I'll just show you there on the camera. Uh, the spring is just sat there against the diaphragm. Uh, we can just remove that quite simply, just slides out. And in the bottom there, there are grooves for the spring to sit on, if you can see that there. And that just keeps the spring uh, straight and true. Uh, so for the purposes of this, we'll just use the same spring again, slide it back in. Now on the spring adjustment assembly, there are these notches which need to be lined up to the holes. Uh, and that means that the adjustment assembly needs to go in a certain way, so you can't get it wrong. Um, and if you push that down, you need to find it into a comfortable position. You might need to just turn it clockwise until you feel it go flush, and then use clockwise turning again to line up the top assembly to that groove, as that will then allow us uh, to replace the holding clip. So the holding clip goes over the spring adjustment screw, and then if you push it back, you'll hear a nice satisfying click and top cap back on, and that is the spring change done. Uh, one thing I will mention is the label does show the spring range inside. So if you do change for a different spring, change the label. Okay, so that concludes our spring change of the J48 regulator. If you do have any questions or queries, please feel free to get in touch with us, either commenting uh, on the video or getting in touch with us by phone or email. If you found the video interesting, if you can leave it a like, we would really appreciate it. And please stay subscribed for all future videos from DMS. We hope to see you in the next one. Bye everyone.